Sunday, everyone, wherever you're watching from, I hope that you're enjoying yourself. Uh, it's already February. We're happy to share this Sunday with you. Let's worship together. Every child will see your glory. Every nation bow before you. All our treasure. 
flesh had turned to ashes in the light of you. bow before you all our all our treasure turned to ashes in the light of you oh, as we're singing holy is the Lord almighty only you are worthy of it all. Lift him up. Praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God. Your matchless, endless love on restraint. This is our God. Every I sing. Praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God. Unto our God, your matchless, endless love on restraint. This is our God, every tribe sing. Ayo, ayo, where you are. 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 There is no one like our God. There is no one like a God. Sing it out. There is no one like a God. There is no one like a God. Wala kang katulad o Dios. 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 There is no, there is no one like a God. There is no one like a God. Oh, there is no one like a God. There is no one like a God. Say, praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God. Your matchless and this love unrestrained. This is our God. Every child in praise and glory. Honor and strength unto our God, unto our God, the matchless and the love on restraint. This is our God, ever in praise and glory. Honor and strength unto our God, unto our God, your matchless and the love on restraint. This is our God. Every time. There is no one like a God. There is no one like a God. There is no one like a God. There is no Your face, it shines where 
righteousness. Your voice, it shakes the ground. You greet us with your gentleness and fill us with sound. And the earth is filled with your glory, filled with your glory, filled with your glory. And we, we will cry holy, we will cry holy, we will cry holy. Sing to the earth, the earth is filled with your glory, filled with your glory, oh. filled with your glory. And we cry, and we To the tents of the earth, sing undone, undone by love. Your holy kiss has cleansed us by your fire, and seated with our race and hope. we cried out. We join Decorating his slowly saved now stands in royal robe. The orphan, oh, the orphan, oh, the dead alive, the dust in glory go. Oh. 
Brothers and sisters, in Psalms chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, it says, Keep me safe by God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. In this uh, prayer of uh, King David, we see him uh, humbling himself before God and totally depending on him. You know, he said, keep me safe, O Lord. He was totally dependent on God for His safety, sustenance, and even His salvation. And in verse 2, He acknowledges that every good thing comes from God. Na wala siyang pwedeng ipagmalaki o ipagyabang dahil lahat ng bagay na meron siya sa lupa ay nanggaling sa Diyos. That is why today, brothers and sisters, let us continually humble ourselves before God and totally depend on Him because every good thing comes from God. Kung meron man tayong pangangailangan ngayon, kung ano man yun, let's just come to God and ask. And He promised that He will always answer our prayers and provide for us. Why don't we all bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, thank You that You're a loving God. Thank You that You promise You will never leave us and forsake us. Thank You that You are powerful and mighty, that You can protect Your people, that You can uh, provide for Your people and save your people and that is why today we just lord uh, say we totally depend on you and thank you lord that you will always be for us in jesus name we pray amen and amen again uh church um, a blessed sunday to each and every one of you again we would like to thank you for joining us in our victory online worship service Matagal-tagal na rin po natin ginagawa ito. Pero tayo pa rin ay natutuwa at nagagalak at nagpupuri sa Panginoon dahil binigyan niya tayo ng uh, avenue kung saan uh, pwede pa rin tayong magsamba at makinig sa kanyang salita. Tayo po ay uh, uh, nagagalak no? na even if we don't have an on-site uh, fellowship, we can still fellowship with one another through the technology that we are enjoying now. Sabi nga sa Bible, no, in the book of Hebrews, that we should not uh, stop meeting together. And this is one way that we can meet together. Kahit mahirap, kahit walang uh, on-site meeting, we can still fellowship with one another. Uh, I hope and pray that you are being sustained by the Lord, uh, being uh, given uh, strength and joy every day. Now, church, uh, this Sunday, we're going to continue our uh, preaching series we have entitled uh, Trustworthy. We would look at, uh, we would like to look at uh, the character of uh, our God, that He is a covenant-keeping God, and that we can totally depend on Him, uh, resulting for uh, resulting to a deeper uh, devotion and deeper commitment to our God. Now, sa linggong ito, mga kapatid, we are so blessed because we will be hearing the preaching of the word through uh, the pastor of our Victory Kawayan. Walang iba po kundi si Pastor Jay Medrano. Pastor Jay Medrano came to know the Lord when he was still a student of UP Manila. And right after graduation, he volunteered as a uh, campus missionary at our uh, Victory Santiago. And after a while, he was uh, sent to Kawayan 
to be a church planter there and uh, has been uh, pastoring our church there for nine years now and uh, it, is, it has been uh, growing and thriving even in this time of pandemic. Madami po ang nakakakilala sa Panginoon at madami po ang nababago ang buhay because of uh, them being a salt and a light in Kawayan. So, uh, Pastor Jay Medrano is married to Roxanne and they have uh, three uh, sons. Uh, they call uh, them world changers, si Daniel, Paolo, and Haro. So, brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts and uh, receive the preaching of the word through Pastor Jay Medrano. Thank you. Hi, Victory North East Luzon congregations. Bless Sunday to all. Before I share the word today, let me first honor and appreciate your senior pastor and his wife for their faith and faithfulness and in the way they serve and lead the church in these times. I would like to honor Pastor Ross and Mona of Victory to Gigarao, Pastor Jonathan and Jing of Victory Tabuk. Pastor Windell and Shirley, our church planters, to Rojas, Pastor Jude and Doc Bia of Victory Ilagan, Pastor Jojo and Doc Beth of Victory Santiago, Pastor Romer and Chiclet of Victory Bayumbong, and Pastor Gani and Ao of Victory Bambang. I thank the Lord for your lives to just be able to walk the Lord with you and uh, serve the Lord with you in honoring God and making disciples in this region. Now for the word, we are on the series entitled Trustworthy, and we are looking at the characters and attributes of God, and the goal of this series is for us to grow a deeper in our relationship with God, resulting to um, greater fruitfulness and godly living that impacts our homes, our communities, and the nations. One of the amazing things about Christianity is that it is a relationship with God. When God created man, it has been the desire of God to be in a good relationship with them. That's why God initiated and established covenant relationships with man, like with Adam, with uh, Noah, with Abraham, Moses and the nation of Israel, David, and his calling people right now to be part of the new covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this relationship that God desired is not just a king to a follower or master to a slave, but even a father to a child relationship. For each one of us, whether it's your first time to join us perhaps, or you've been joining our worship services for the past uh, months and you're part of the church for years now and decades and you're our, a leader, I believe that there are many times or there are still times where we know that we fall short of that relationship. There are times that we still sin, there are still compromises, and we know that there are things that we do which are not yet pleasing to God, including our obedience to the call to go and make disciples. As our focus today is on God's holiness, and as we look at Isaiah chapter 6, we want to answer this, that question. What does God's holiness mean, and how should we respond to the holiness of God for us to grow deeper in our relationship and obedience to God? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We praise you for who you are, for you are great and good, that you are mindful of us, Lord. And our prayer is that as we talk about your holiness, we pray that we may not just understand but experience it, Lord. And would you help me in preaching your word? In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, as the background says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So the first part of Isaiah chapter 6 is Isaiah's vision of the Lord. 
and he received this vision, he experienced seeing the Lord in the year that King Uzziah died. King Uzziah was one of the top five great kings of the nation of Israel and Judah. He was popular. He was a beloved king, generally a, a, a good king for the nation. And after 52 years of reigning as king, he died. So just imagine the impact of that to Isaiah and the whole nation. So there was darkness, there's uncertainty, and even it, it was a challenging time for the whole nation because, again, their leader just died economically. There's an effect to that. And the Assyrian uh, nation is rising as a great power and starting to invade. And personally for Isaiah, he was, it was said that he was close to King Uzziah and that he, he, they, are, they were cousins. So just imagine the, the, the situation where they were, they were in and Isaiah was in during that time. But it was during this dark, uncertain, and challenging times that Isaiah saw the Lord sitting. He saw the Lord Adonai alive and reigning. Yes, King Uzziah, probably, you know, the prophet's king, um, just died, but they were not alone for the Lord, Yahweh, is with them. He was sitting, meaning that he is supreme, he is reigning, he is in full control of everything that's happening. He is not in any way threatened or worried. And his throne is high and lifted high. It speaks of God's supremacy. The Lord is powerful over all and second to none. And continue on, continuing on on verse 1, it says, And the train of his robe filled the temple. Or the other translation of this is the hem. You know, the, just the tip or the edge of the robe of the king, of the Lord, is already so glorious, majestic, and beautiful. And this vision of uh, God, I believe, brought comfort to Isaiah. He and the nation may be facing a dark, uncertain, and challenging times, but the Lord was there. We can somehow relate to this, isn't it? Because of this dark, uncertain, and challenging times that we are facing for one year now. And yet, let me just encourage you that this is the perfect time for us to go to God and seek God um, in a greater way like never before and be comforted by the fact that we have the Lord who is sovereign and majestic and powerful and good. In verse 2, above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. This was the only time in the Bible that the word seraphim was used. But when Isaiah saw these beings uh, burning, glowing, he put it there, seraphim, which means bur a burning one. They were covering their face because of the holiness of God and they were covering their feet with uh, another set of wings, symbolic of their op full obedience to the Lord. Verse 3, And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. The seraphim, they can't help but declare the holiness of God. What does holy, the word holy, mean? The primary meaning of holy is separate or set apart. It was, the, the word holy is not only used to describe that essential attribute of God, but it was also used in the Bible as an adjective to describe things and places and people. So we could see in the Bible, for example, holy ground, holy city, holy uh, utensils, holy water, holy dress, and even holy people. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, uh, taken from Leviticus, it says, Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Again, 
holy primarily means to be separated, set apart, or different from the ordinary. Our three boys, uh, Daniel, who's 10 years old, Paolo, 7, and Jaro, who's 4 years old, one of their favorite toys is uh, mini Legos. They, they are actually builders. They like to build um, tanks and figure characters and structures um, using mini Legos. And we are teaching them to tidy up, you know, the toys uh, after the use. So they have boxes, different boxes for each type of toy. And they have plenty of these many Legos. But there's a group of mini Legos they have, which is special. It goes to a different box. It goes to a different place. And they wouldn't want, you know, this uh, group of Legos be combined with the other mini Legos. You know why? Because they are original. And how do you know that it's an original mini Lego out of the many uh, Lego mini Legos there? The, the logo of the Lego is in there. And they know that it's special and it's pricey. When applied to God, the holiness of God is even in, even in an entirely different level. So when we say God's holiness... The primary meaning is God's otherness, that he is one of a kind. He is much more majestic, awesome, beautiful, great, superior than any other. And it is what makes God, God. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11 says, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. God's holiness speaks of his otherness, but partly also it talks of his absolute purity. Unlike man, unlike other creatures, he is without sin. Perfect in every way and perfectly good all the time. That's why we could trust him. But wait, there's more. Because in Isaiah's life-changing vision and experience of God, the Lord is described as not just holy, not just holy, holy, but the Lord is described as holy, 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 the Lord of hosts is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, in the uh, Hebrew uh, language, if they want to emphasize something, they repeat it. To emphasize and to give uh, a, a greater degree uh, of the word, they repeat it. Kumbaga sa atin ngayon, pag nag encode tayo, binobold or italicize natin, underline pa, di ba, yung salita that we wanna emphasize. Uh, sa, sa English, you know, to emphasize the degree or level of equality, we put a superlative. Diba? Like for example, cute. When, when that person is super cute, you say, you say it's he, is, he or she is too cute or he's the cutest, isn't it? So we put a superlative. Pero sa Tagalog, paano ba natin ginagawa yun sa Filipino? Diba, inuulit natin. Pag sobrang cute yung isang bata, sinasabi natin, ang cute-cute mo, di ba? Or ang sarap-sarap, ang init-init, ang saya-saya. So, ang Filipino word is like the Hebrew word, you know, to again, to emphasize and to give uh, the level or the degree of uh, uh, of a description, they use, they repeat the words. And God is said to be not just holy, but He is holy Holy, holy. Nowhere in the Bible that a word is repeated three times na magkakasunod. God is love, yes, but the Bible did not say that God is love, love, love. God is merciful, yes, but never in the Bible it says God is merciful, merciful, merciful. But in terms of holiness, God is not just holy, but He is holy, Holy, holy. 
I came across this and I want to share it with you. I'm not an ex expert with diamonds, but I came across this that there is a way on how they, uh, they uh, give value to a diamond. Alam naman natin, ang diamond is one of the rarest stone and so it's really expensive. It's pricey. It's, it's valuable. And there are four ways. They call it four C's. The cut, the clarity, the color, and we're familiar with the last one, the carrot. And one of the important essential things to look at, whether it's really a pure diamond or it's a flawless, expensive diamond, is the clarity. Because uh, a flawless diamond has to be no or minimal inclusions. Inclusions are the small imperfections visible under 10 times magnification. So pag tinitignan mo lang, hindi mo makikita imperfection nun, but it has to be 10 times magnified. And talking about the diamonds, it is said that in reality, no diamond is flawless. There is always imperfection. Because diamonds are formed in nature under extreme pressure and heat, Diamonds cannot be 100% pure. But with God, our God is not just holy, but He is holy, holy, holy. That's how majestic, that's how great, that's how awesome and beautiful our God is. And I believe in this uh, first part of Isaiah chapter 6. This is the wow aspect of God's holiness. This is the aspect of God's holiness that we like or we desire about, isn't it? In verse 4, And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Ito na yun. Talagang even things without life are undone. Just by, you know, describing the holiness, holiness, and holiness of God. How much more, you know, will man be changed and transformed and be undone with the holy, in the presence of holiness of God? After understanding the holiness of God, we want to learn how did Isaiah respond to this experience of the holiness of God? Verse 5, And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Sa Tagalog, nais ko pong basahin, Sinabi ko, Kawawa ako sapagkat ako ay isang makasalanan at mula sa isang lahing makasalanan. Mapapahamak ako sapagkat nakita ko ang hari, si Yahweh, ang makapangyarihan sa lahat. So sabi niya, woe is me. Kawawa ako. I am undone. I am lost. Mapapahamak ako. When Isaiah had a revelation of the holiness of God, he saw his sinfulness in light of the holiness of God. He saw his sinfulness. And what that's what the holiness of God does. It reveals man's sinfulness. This is Isaiah. He was a prophet. He was a, a, a good man. He was pious. He was a religious man comparing his goodness to others. I mean, he is on the top. But when he was in the presence of the holiness of God, he saw his sin for what it is. That, his, that he is a sinner and that his sin is a direct assault. It's a rebellion against the Holy God. That's why ang response niya, lagot ako, kawawa ako. It's a response of terror. So from an experience of wow to God's holiness, this is an, an aspect of God's holiness where woe is me is our response. We understand our sinfulness. And Isaiah knew it. Sin and holiness cannot go together. And sin is deserving of God's judgment because it's a direct assault. It's a rebellion. It's a pride against the holy God. He knew that he could be judged. 
he could be he could die at that at that time and that's very important to see sin as what it is kasi what man does generally it's true religion is that they either minimize the holiness of god or they minimize the sin na okay lang ito may intindihan ito ni lord maliit na bagay naman lang ito lahat naman ginagawa ito eh gracious naman si God, di ba? Or pag uwi ko, bilhan ko na lang ng pasalubong si God. Kaya nga ang idol, it's very appealing to man because an idol is someone that man could manipulate. You know? But it's the different way around. God is God and we are the one who should be transformed. We should be the one to conform to His holiness and to His standard the other way and not the other way around. So His response Isaiah's response to God's holiness is he acknowledged his sinfulness. He acknowledged his sinfulness. Woe to me, he said, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips. He acknowledged his sinfulness. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He acknowledged din niya yung sinfulness ng kanyang nation. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. It's terrifying to be a sinful man and be in the presence of a holy God sitting on the throne. But it is comforting to know, church, that God has a provision of grace and mercy. What we cannot do on our own because Sin is sin and there's no way that we could do. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na pagbayaran ko na lang yung kasalanan. Gagawa na lang ko na mas maraming mabuti. Minsan, uh, para pagbayaran yung kasalanan natin. There's no way for, uh, Isaiah knew that, that there's no way for him, you know, to pay back his sinfulness. Um, I don't know, may, uh, sa religious mindset, meron pa tayong, uh, may attitude pa yung tao na, Atenda lang ako sa Sunday para mapagbayaran yung mga kasalanan na gawa ko the past days. No, no amount of good works. There's no way that out of our own can we solve the problem of sin. But the good news is that God provided mercy and grace. We see that in verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins atoned for. So you see, there was a throne. Uh, be, uh, there was a throne where the holy God is seated and yet there was also an altar. So, one of the seraphim was asked, sobrang holy nung coal. That's why he even needed to use a tongue to hold it. And it may be terrifying for Isaiah, but there's a measure of trust that he lets, you know, the, 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 the seraph to touch his lips with the burning coal from the altar. And instead of him being judged, because fire is a symbol of judgment, be, instead of him being consumed, it said that he was cleansed. Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And this is not out of God's, of Isaiah's goodness, but out of the mercy and grace of God. Grace is unmerited favor. undeserved favor. It's a gift from God. Out of the goodness of God, God provided mercy and grace for Isaiah's sin to be forgiven, for the sin to be uh, amended or atoned for, to be appeased, para mawala yung kasalanan na nagseseparate from his good relationship with God. Because the holiness of God demands you know, a perfect sacrifice. And this is a foreshadow of Jesus' sacrifice. In the Old Testament, for the people to have, you know, a relationship with God so that they would come to God's presence, they need to offer in the altar 
uh, animals. So it's a burnt offering. So that when God would look at the people, um, the people will be covered. So what God will see is the blood. The, the pure blood of the animals. But in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26 to 27, For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need like those high priests to offer sacrifices daily, for, for first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. Referring to Jesus, that he is holy, innocent, unstained, um, holy, exalted, but once and for all, he became the Lamb of God to be sacrificed and take away the sins of the world. So what the uh, burning coal from the altar um, did to Isaiah is a foreshadow of what Christ Will, off, will do and offer to people hundreds of years later. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For our sake he made him, referring to Jesus Christ, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So you see, Jesus' sinless life and sacrificial death on the cross is God's grace to cleanse man from sin and be made in a right relationship with God. Jesus was the great provision of mercy and grace for us today. And just like Isaiah, we have to be we have to respond you know to God's holiness with acknowledgement of our sin. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, to confess is to acknowledge. Aminin natin, hindi natin itago, hindi natin gagawing maliit yung kasalanan, but for what it is, we will acknowledge it before God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. So when we confess our sin, what's, what does the Bible say? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's not only to forgive us and cleanse us from sin, but also to make us righteous and restore our relationship back with God, to put us in a right standing with God. And for us today, we receive this grace of God through faith or by faith. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. It's talking about this grace that saves us. It's the same grace that will teach us to say no to all ungodliness. So for Isaiah and for us today, the grace of God that, um, that he provides, the grace that God provides is a double grace. It's not only the grace that forgives us of our sin, but it's also the grace, the divine enablement for us to live a holy life, for us to be able to say, say no to sin and say yes to God. Isaiah, because of the provision of the mercy and grace of God, was a changed man. Verse 8, as we continue. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The second response of Isaiah to God's holiness is, Isaiah obeyed God's call. He obeyed God's call. And you know what? He was prepared to say yes. It was not an easy Calling. It was a holy calling for Isaiah because he would preach before a people whom he knew will not believe. They will not respond. He knew that. And actually, Isaiah died as a martyr before preaching the word of God. And he knew that as a result of his preaching and the people not responding to his call to repentance, they will be judged as a result. It was not an easy call. But what made Isaiah obey God's call completely, he was motivated by the caller and the call. After the encounter with this holy, holy, holy Lord, and after, you know, experiencing the provision 
of His grace, He could not say no, but yes. He could, say, he could not say no, but yes. Who is the caller? It's the Holy King. Just like the seraphim who were covering their uh, feet as a sign of obedience, he could not say no, but say yes to this holy, holy, holy king. And he experienced the beauty, the abundance of the provision of God's grace, the forgiveness of sin, and the grace to live a new life. He could not say no to that. In Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20 for us today, the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to God, to Jesus. And Jesus is commanding his disciples, commanding each one of us, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything that I have commanded you. And God said, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. An experience of God's holiness and the provision of grace lead us to acknowledge our sinfulness and to obey Him completely. Let me repeat that. An experience of God's holiness and the provision of His grace lead us to acknowledge our sinfulness and to obey Him completely. So from a wow experience of God's holiness to a woe to me, experience to another wow experience of God's provision and grace. As I start to end, the question is, can we still experience God's holiness today so that we may grow in our obedience to Him as a response? The answer is yes, I believe so. The key is in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 to 13. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When we go to God and call on, me, call on Him by faith in prayer, seek Him. And He said, we will find Him. And as He would speak to us, reveal to us areas in our lives that are not pleasing before God, I pray and I exhort you to not harden your hearts. hearts. Acknowledge your sin before God. Acknowledge your limitations. Say, Lord, I cannot do this. This is hard. This is beyond me, Lord. But because you said so, I'm willing to walk this journey with you. I'm willing to obey. We will obey because of the caller who is our holy, holy, holy Lord and because of the beauty and the power of the gospel message that we are asked to share to other people so that they too will experience being in a right relationship with God and experiencing the blessing that God has destined for them. Let's pray. God, we, we worship you. Thank you for allowing us, even in this, in through your word and in this message today, to see and experience your holiness. And God, we, we acknowledge our sin. We say sorry. And thank you, Lord God, for giving us a fresh, uh, a new heart today, a new heart to obey you, to, to serve you, to please you, to walk in light of who you are, Lord God. Lord, it's hard to live a holy life, but thank you for your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are God in us, teaching us, Lord, to obey and be Christ-like. Lord, I pray that you will empower your church today, Lord God, as you have a clear call for each one of us to go and make disciples, starting in our own homes, Lord, in our community, in our campus, in our offices, in our own towns and cities and to the nations. Lord, thank you that today you are giving us a fresh spirit to obey your call because of your holiness and because of the beauty, Lord God, of the message that we will preach. Bless your church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. The earth 
is filled with your glory filled with your glory filled with your glory and we we will cry holy we will cry holy we will cry holy and the earth is filled with your glory
Good day everyone. Let me lead you to our text which can be read at Isaiah chapter 6 verse 6 to 7. It says here, Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. In this verse, we can see three important things. First, it's only God alone who can provide cleansing and atonement. Second, God atones us entirely, not partially, entirely to make us holy. You will see in the verse that it's only Isaiah's mouth was touched. But afterwards, you can see also that his entire life was changed. In fact, his entire life, he lived his entire life for God's purpose. Then lastly, God sets us apart fully for His purpose. As believers, we are cleansed, we are atoned for, and because of that, we are made holy or we are set apart. It means that everything in and about us is intended for His purpose only, including our finances. So let us use our finances to honor Him, and one way to do that is through giving. Let us pray. Lord, right now, I just pray that you give us the heart to use our finances for your glory through giving. Give us that heart to know that you have set us apart and everything is about us. Everything about us is about is for you. So you allow us, empower us to use everything about us, everything in us, to give honor to you. And I believe and we know that as we do that, you are a generous God who will generously respond to us if we choose to live our lives setting apart everything to give honor to you for your purpose. I say a prayer for everyone who has been, mo who, who, those who have been most severely affected by this pandemic. I just pray that you bless them. I pray that you speak with them. I pray that your Holy Spirit minister to them and assure them that you will see them too. That despite everything, every circumstance that surrounds us, your love is there with us and you will see us through. You will sustain us. And we are so looking forward to the day that after this pandemic is done, we shall testify of how you have sustained us. I just also pray for everyone who are struggling right now. For those who are confused, whose businesses were affected, whose businesses are in danger of closing. For those who just are so confused and they do not know what to do next because they lost their jobs and they feel hopeless. I just pray right now that you speak to them and just assure them and let, your, let them feel your love. Thank you, Lord. We honor you and we pray to you. This is in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three ways for you to give your tithes and offering. First is by dropping your tithes and offering from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Luna Street, second floor of the Home and Office Furniture and at Victory Building, Bagay Road, in front of the EM Campus Office. Second, you can give through direct deposit or bank transfer. Just message Ms. Erna Balubal for this regarding this option. Third, you can also give through GCash. Just scan the code posted here at our Victory Together Facebook page and send a screenshot of the transaction done through private message to Victory Together. The giving of tithes and offerings are for Victory members only. If you are a guest, you are not obliged to give, but if you wish to do so, we pray that God will richly bless you. Thank you for your generosity. As we end our uh, worship service, brothers and sisters, let me just declare this prayer of blessing found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Have a great week, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name.
Let's all stand and focus our attention on worshiping God. ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. God created us in a community, which means we will always be surrounded with people like our families, friends, and classmates, and neighbors. And God commands us to love them, whether we encounter them in person or online, by being respectful and considerate with our words and actions. So with that, let's all pray. Dear Abba Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us to worship you. I pray that through your word, through the preaching of your word today, and as we watch the video, may we be reminded of how you want us to love the people around us by showing how much we respect them with how we talk to them and treat them. And thank you, Lord, for this time. I pray that you would bless this time of worship. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another way to worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. and welcome back to Kids Church for All Ages! My name is Teacher Plum and I'm here with... Teacher JC! Shout out to Kael Katungal, Luna Martin, and Andy Mengita! We are now in the second week of our series called Back to Basics. Yeah, last week we learned about honesty. 
and today we will be learning about respect and it's great timing because today is actually Mother's Day! Have you greeted your mother yet, Teacher Blow? I have. Have you? Of course! Well, Teacher JC, today we'll be giving the kids one minute to go run and hug their mothers and greet them a happy Mother's Day! Go, go, go! One minute! So let's talk about respect. To help us remember how we can show respect, we made a respect acrostic. If you don't know what an acrostic is, we just took the first letters of the word respect, that's R-E-S-P-E-C-T, and we put sentences per letter. Let's begin. R, respond with magic words like please and thank you. Hey, Chris. Could you pass me the mic, please? Oh, sure. Here you go. All right. Thank you. E. Early to appointments because I respect people's time. Whew. I got in 15 minutes earlier than expected. Awesome! S. Saying the name of the person because they are important to me. Man, this is so embarrassing. I forgot his name. We've been friends for a long time and I never called him by his name. And now I, uh, I totally forgot. Hey, Jay! Oh, his name is Jay. I remember now. Ooh, that was a close call. I'll try to remember and call his name and the names of everyone else next time. It's only right that we call people by their names. P. Pay attention to what people are saying and looking them in the eye. Hey Chris, I have a big problem in school. Oh really? Uh, that's cool. Uh, it looks like I won't be able to submit my project in science on time. And I'm afraid my grades will go down. Oh, that's great. Uh, let's go get some later. Hey, are you listening? I'm telling you about my problems and you aren't paying attention. Um, I'm sorry, bro. I should have paid attention. Let's start from the beginning. E. Excuse me should be said instead of just interrupting. <laughs> Um, excuse me, I have a suggestion. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead, Jake. We will have a joke. C. Courtesy by waiting my turn in a line. Ooh, the line is so long. Well, I can wait. I shouldn't force myself to go to the front. That would be uncourteous. And T, tone should be gentle and friendly. Hey, um, good afternoon. Yes, sir. How can we help you today? Well, I came here yesterday and I've been saving up for this item for a very long time. But I ended up receiving a defective one. Oh! I feel a bit angry right now, but I know you guys can help me out with this one. Oh, sure, sir. 
We're sorry about the inconvenience. We'll make it up for you, sir. Thank you for your patience. We can show respect to the people around us. But did you know that the Bible has something to say about respecting others? Let's watch this video and listen to the word. People don't get me. Or rather, they always want to get me. People think they can earn me, and so they try so hard to perform or do better than everybody else. It's especially hard for us kids when people or parents don't listen, have time for us, or pay attention to our ideas or concerns. And sometimes, when we do something wrong, we feel bad when we feel unheard, or our side of the story isn't heard, and we get scolded and end up feeling so small. My name is Respect, and I'm one of the back-to-basic virtues found in God's Word. Paul even writes to the Christians in Rome in Romans 12.10 to love one another deeply, honor others more than yourselves. Even when us kids don't get any respect, God wants us to give respect to others, to honor our parents by obeying them even when it's hard, to love our family and friends by paying attention to them and to care for them. Remember, Jesus Christ himself considered others, yes, you and me, as better than him and gave us the greatest honor and respect one could give by coming down from heaven to serve and save us. How have you shown respect to someone today? Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Brandel and I'm so excited to share the word with us today. But before I do that, I wanna say hello first to Kobe, Twinkle, Liam, and Georgie Agot. Hello and good to have you today. Before we start the word today, I'd like to greet everyone. A happy Mother's Day. I'm sure there are moms watching right now we want to thank you for just pouring out your heart with a God-given role that is placed on you. You are all amazing. Uh, you do a lot of things in the home. So we want to honor you. Happy Mother's Day. So today, we talk about Romans 12 verse 10. We talk about respect. If there's one thing that we always give to our mom aside from love, it's respect. We always hear that word from our parents. Filipinos especially have a culture of respect. We use to certain words like po, or opo, we bless our elders, and we never call older people just by their first names. We always call them kuya, lola, tita, ma'am, sir. But respect goes beyond just how you treat people. Respect must start from the heart. We need to see people as valuable because they are. Jesus died for them too, after all. So they must be important to us as well. We need to see other people as valuable as Jesus saw them. We must also treat them as such. The Bible actually goes one step further. It says in Romans 12 verse 10, Love one another deeply. Honor others more than yourself. Our motivation for respecting others is actually love. We are able to love because God loved us first. He showed this love by sending Jesus to die for our sins. Jesus' death on the cross showed the depth of His love and enables us to love others as well. Now, the Bible tells us to show our love by honoring others more than ourselves. Wow, that's difficult. But you know what? Because Jesus did it, we can do it as well. While the world tells us to treat others as equals, the Bible says we should honor others more than ourselves. As we do this, sign of respect, we are displaying the radical love of God and this brings others close to Him. Most of the way we act shows how we respect others. When we don't obey our parents, we are disrespecting them. When we always show up late in our appointments, we're not respecting the time of that person that we are meeting. When we don't fall in line, I wanna go first. We are making the people in front of us feel that they are not important. Even the way we talk to people can show a lack of respect, like being rude or simply not making eye contact or interrupting them while they are talking. 
Showing a lack of respect makes people sad and it dishonors God. That's why we will show that we love people and we value them by making them feel important through respect. As we do this, God is glorified. So one thing that we can learn from our power truth for today is that say this together with me, I will honor God with my character. As it is said in our power verse in 2 Corinthians 8.21, we want to do what pleases the Lord and what people think is right. That's my prayer for all of us, that we will see respect, that it means valuing or honoring people more than ourselves. The best example of this is Jesus. Jesus willingly died on the cross in order to save us from our sins. We are forgiven because of His sacrifice. We are accorded the honor of being reconciled to God and privileged to live with Him in heaven for eternity. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for valuing us, for dying on the cross for us. We want to do that to the world, but we cannot do it just by ourselves. We, can, we, wanna, we wanna respect, we wanna value people, we wanna value our parents and the people around us, but we can't do it just by ourselves. Holy Spirit, thank you, for you will give us the power to show respect to the people around us. And we will see that you will be glorified as we treat people around us with respect. Thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Hi kids, and welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Before we start our craft time for today, let's see what you guys made last week. Last week, we made butterflies to remind us that we are new creations. Great job, everyone.
Now, today we learned about respect. But before we go to our craft time, I just want to give a shout out to Namahasmin and Katie Ko. And also, I want to greet my friend Abby Zoe Aipocho. A very happy birthday. She is from Sorsogon. Now, let's get crafting. We are going to make a garden of good manners because we learned about respect. So for this craft, we will be needing different colored papers I have over here. And you know kids, these are actually the scrap papers that I used from previous crafts. Don't forget to maximize the materials that you have. You'll also need a pen. I'm using a green pen because we're making a garden. And we'll also need some tape or some glue, scissors, and of course, some board paper because this is where we are going to stick our garden. So let's begin. The first step is to take our colored paper and using a pen or a pencil, just draw on some flowers that you know. Like you can draw a daisy or a sunflower. And once you're done drawing your flowers on the colored papers, just Cut them with your scissors. So over here, I have some flowers that I've already cut. I have this sunflower. I used yellow for the petals and for that circle in the middle, I used some brown. And I also cut some tulips. These are pink tulips. These are very beautiful flowers. And some regular flowers. I use this color lilac and this color blue to make my regular flowers. And of course, I also cut a plant box. But you can cut a vase or maybe some pots of different kinds. But I wanted to use this planter box because I just wanted it to look like a real garden. Now, it's time for us to assemble. I'll take this planter box first and using my double-sided tape, I'm gonna tape it to the bottom of my board paper. Just over here. See? Now, we will take our tape again and we will position our flowers in our garden. Of course, you can go creative with your garden. You can use different types of coloring materials like watercolor for the background. You can paint the sky blue and the grass green. Aside from the colored paper that you're gonna use, you can use other art materials, of course. So I'm putting the tulips at the bottom. And ta-da! I'm done sticking the flowers on my board paper. Now I'm gonna use a green pen to just draw the stems. You can of course use your own green colored paper if you have, but I'm just using a pen because I want my stems to be long and to be skinny, just like this. And you can draw on leaves also if you want, or maybe you can cut out leaves for your flowers. So this is how my garden looks like, but we're not done yet. This is called a garden of good manners, which is why we will be writing some respectful words inside each flower. For example, in this tulip, I am gonna put excuse me. And for this flower, I'm gonna put please. Please is also a respectful word. Do you say please? Also, do you say thank you? How about may I? May I borrow your ball pen? Or may I go to the kitchen and have a wonderful snack? What else do we say to be respectful? In the Philippines, we say po or opo. So I'm just gonna put it here, po and opo. And here in the planter box, I am gonna write the Garden of Good Manners. Ta-da! We're now done with our craft. We discussed today the various ways we can show respect. For our craft, we focused on words that can show people that we value them. And since it's Mother's Day today, you can give your flowers to your mom and tell her that you would like to honor her by committing to show respect to her and to other people through your words. And that's it! We're now done with our craft. 
If you haven't heard yet, we're having another craft raffle giveaway this month. It's actually the second week of this month. And if you want to join the raffle and be included in our video for next week, please send a photo of you and your craft of the week to the email address flashed on the screen. That's kidsfort at victory.org.ph. The deadline of photo submissions is on Monday, 5 p.m. See you next week, kids! Bye! Wait, don't leave yet! It's Teacher Mean! Who do you think deserves our respect? Choose your character! Choose your character! your pick I pick all and more respect is to honor and value people more than yourself for our family con give examples of how you can show respect to the people in your home see you next week bye <laughs>